New at seven, another major signing for the University of the West Indies Five Islands campus. One more COVID-19 death and 25 new infections recorded in latest dashboard. Dire warning from the World Health Organization. The world is likely to see several more variants of the coronavirus. And Creative Industries Ministry pays tribute following the death of Eduardo Pye. The details begin right now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening and warm welcome. You're in tune with the ABS Evening News. Karen Evias, Antigua's most trusted name in news. My name is Garfield Burford. Warm welcome. And I'm Sequoia Servia. Thank you so much for joining us. The University of the West Indies Five Islands Campus has concretized another key partnership. That's right, Sequoia. A memorandum of understanding signed with a United States university is expected to further fuel the campus's growth and boost its capacity. Jessica Russell joins us in studio with the latest on a major developing de development for the campus. Good evening, Jessica. Good evening. It is the latest high-profile signing by the University of the West Indies Five Islands Campus. University officials today signed a memorandum of understanding with the University of Maryland, Baltimore County at a brief ceremony. <laughs> The UE5 Islands campus signed a memorandum of understanding with the University of Maryland Baltimore County today. The arrangement will see UE have greater access to research resources. UE5 Islands Director for Academic Affairs, Dr. Curtis Charles, is the lead on the MOU. The U.S. funds public institutions at $90 billion a year, 90 would it be, and University of Maryland Baltimore County is in the top 100. So for us, being in the Caribbean, not being able to access U.S.-funded um, research from a primary investigator, it was important to us to develop a relationship with a research university like UMBC who has access to that type of funding. The arrangement will benefit the entire UE brand. It's open to all other UE campuses. The MOU also makes provisions for a visiting scholar program. We look forward to having your students and, uh, of course, invite all the faculty and the administration as, as we evolve in our partnership to come to visit UMBC and we look forward to seeing our faculty and our students also uh, visiting uh, your campuses. The five-year agreement takes immediate effect. Over to you two. All right, thank you so much, Jessica. Really appreciate it. We look forward to much more developing stories in relation to this as well. Let's keep you across another developing story at this hour. Antiguan Bravida has recorded another COVID-19 death, taking the total to 121. There were also 25 new infections as at last Wednesday. Well, that's the latest dashboard you're looking at now. However, the health ministry says active cases have fallen from 1,025 to 985 since there were 65 additional recoveries. The 25 new cases emerged from tests on 116 samples. Nine of the infected individuals remain in hospital with COVID-19, five with moderate symptoms and four with mild symptoms. To date, 5,346 have contracted the virus, while 4,240 have recovered so far. Now here's a story developing overseas, which will be watched closely in this country. Leading international health experts are discussing an annual booster to treat all variants of COVID-19 as they expect the virus to continue to mutate. Omicron will not be the last um, variant. Um, clearly, with, with such high uh, virus circulation as we are seeing now, there's a high probability that we will have another variant coming up. The question is, where and when, and will it be more dangerous or less dangerous than the current uh, variant of concerns? But there seems to be a consensus on treating current and potential COVID-19 variants. According to Chief Medical Advisor to the President of the United States, Dr. Anthony Fauci, management of the virus and its variants must be, ba must be on a broad-based effort. We really don't want to get into the whack-a-mole approach towards every new variant where it comes up and you all of a sudden have to make a new booster against a particular variant it gets up because you'll be chasing it forever. 
Meanwhile, Moderna's chief executive officer says his company is working on one annual booster, just like a flu shot. Our goal is to be able to have a single annual booster so that we don't have compliance issues where people don't want to get two to three shots a winter, but they get one dose where they get you know, a booster for corona and a booster for flu and RSV to make sure that people get their vaccine. All right, let's stay with news now that we're tracking as well. There is a stark warning this evening from the World Health Organization, the WHO. The world is likely to see several more variants before the end of the COVID-19 pandemic, even as the Omicron variant continues its spread at lightning speed across the globe. That developing story this evening from Rakiba Parisio. This pandemic is nowhere near over, and with the incredible growth of Omicron globally, New variants are likely to emerge. The Director General of the World Health Organization says scientists across the globe are working to combat COVID-19 and its variants. However, vaccine inequity threatens those advancements. New informations, new formulations of vaccines are being developed and assessed for how they perform against Omicron and other strains. I'm concerned that unless that we change the current model, we will enter a second and even more destructive phase of vaccine inequity. Dr. Gabriel explains vaccine hesitancy is also derailing progress. He urges people to desist from dismissing infections of the Omicron COVID-19 variant as mild disease. The WHO Director General considers the notion misleading and detrimental to the overall response. Make no mistake. Omicron is causing hospitalizations and deaths. And even the less severe cases are inundating health facilities. The virus is circulating far too intensely with many still vulnerable. He reminds the public, vaccines save lives. Vaccines may be less effective at preventing infection and transmission of Omicron than they were for previous variants, but they still are exceptionally good at preventing serious disease and death. Rakib Aparicio reporting for ABS News. Thank you so much, Rakib. Now one family is requesting the public's assistance in reuniting them with their teenage daughter. 15-year-old IDN Mason was last seen leaving her Casada Gardens residence between 6 p.m. and 7 p.m. yesterday. The family has not seen or heard from her since. If you have any information that can assist in locating IDN, please call the nearest police station or the Youth Intervention Unit at 562-8417. Here's a story now, an update on a story we reported last week. You would remember a story from the court. Chief Justice, or sorry, Chief Magistrate Joan Walsh has acquitted a man of a receiving charge after the police admitted that they didn't bother to investigate the defendant's side of the story. It's a story that we mentioned to you last week because investigators charged Kishon Francis with receiving after he pawned tools that someone had reported stolen hours earlier. The defendant told the investigators he found the tools in a trash, uh, in a trash bin at the top of Wireless Road and offered to show them the area. But the court heard the police made no attempt to disprove the defendant's claim. Last week, Francis's attorney, Wendell Robinson, contended good policing required that the officers should have taken his client to the bin to verify if there was any merit to his story. He further argued that abandoned property cannot be stolen, so there was no evidence the defendant stole or received the items illegally. The chief magistrate says while she had doubts about Francis's explanation, the police did not do enough to rule it out. So therefore, she dismissed the charge on Monday, setting Francis free. In addition to the receiving charge, investigators had also accused the defendant of housebreaking with intent to commit a felony. However, this charge was dismissed last week after the prosecution conceded it could not stand. When we come out, much more of the national developments that we are keeping uh, across closely for you, including a response from the public on that story that we mentioned to you uh, with international health experts talking about the possibility of annual booster shots for COVID-19. You'll be hearing the response from the public upcoming on the ABS Evening News on air and online. Stay with us, please. At Najico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home 
and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long, but after all these years, you just can't let go. At Magico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. If something hit one in 30 homes, causing up to $8,600 in damage, you'd expect it to look like this. Not this. Castle free loans for your every need. Courts have you cut, best believe. At Courts Ready Cash, I'd like to thank the staff tremendously for the help that they gave me and in assisting me with my stress. Found myself in a bit of bother and called Quartz and they assisted me at Ready Cash. I would personally recommend Quartz Ready Cash service to any and everybody who needs help. We got it all. We on the go, go, go. Quartz Ready Cash, always ready when you're ready. Let's go. Quartz Ready Cash, ready when you are. Vincent, I'm coming on there tomorrow. I hope you get the AC started out now. Yeah, what the place that I sell AC? You mean LL Supplies? Yes, Jack. They move. Oh, great, Scott. Where they gone now? Don't worry, they're not too far. They just right up the road before Kennedy. LL Supply Limited, your number one supplier for air conditioning and refrigeration parts, has now moved to a fresh and convenient location in order to serve you better. Visit us on Utility Drive, Casada Garden, or call 5626562. LL Supply Limited, we stock quality parts. Janserve is committed to keeping Antigua and Barbuda safe with our mass sanitization program. Our methods are safe, effective, and efficient, and eliminate pathogens, mold, bacteria, and viruses, especially COVID-19. We are introducing the EPA-approved Victory Innovations Electrostatic Sprayer and Vital Oxide Disinfecting Sanitizer. Our solution is even safe to use around children. It's odorless, easy to use, and will disinfect areas and surfaces for up to five to seven days, depending on application. The electrostatic sprayer atomizes the molecules of the vital oxide to adhere itself to all surfaces. It's much more effective than wiping. We are committed to using the most advanced sanitization methods for the safety and health of everyone. For the cleanest clean, contact JanServe today. JanServe is a service mark of the Akima Group Incorporated. Welcome to the ICC Under-19 Cricket World Cup. Will you be there? It's the street when we come and go. The Chilani spills excitement everywhere. What pressure? What pressure? Will you be there to see your stars shine? Will you be there with the biggest fight alive? God. Will you be there if all the six years do not visit, no? The ICC Under-19 Men's Cricket World Cup. Be there January 14th to February 5th. This week on Conversations, we speak to Bishop Lewis. I nearly lost my life in Nicaragua. Join me, Natalie Clark White, for Antigua and Barbuda's prominent people stories and be inspired. Good morning, sir. Here's the meal. Have a good day. Hey, Bob. I'm going to do a guitar. And Dr. E.B. Hey, Bob. Dr. Kilano just couldn't seem to get the respect he deserved, so he went to the good folks at Sherwin Williams for help. A fresh coat of A100, now he looks brand new. Plus, his home is protected from the elements. Bring your home to life with the very best paints, only at Sherwin Williams. Welcome, a versatile and dynamic SUV, the Toyota Rays. Pick your engine, the fuel-efficient 1,200cc or the vibrant 1,000cc turbo. Accessorized with an 8-inch display, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Amazing luggage space and monthly payments as low as $716. Jump into a Toyota Raze today. Raise your style. Raise your confidence. Raise your vibe. Hardy Motors Limited on Factory and American Roads. Call 462-1062 or visit us on Facebook, Instagram, or HardyMotorsLimited.com. A warm welcome back. 
the Ministry of Creative Industries and Innovation is expressing profound sadness following the passing of Eduardo Pyle. Pyle was a musician, the leader of the Soka Monarch Band, and long-standing member of the All-Star Calypso Band. The ministry says Pyle approached his duties with professionalism of the highest standard. The release adds Pyle showed exceptional leadership to those he worked with and mentored. Chairman of the Festival's Commissions, Maurice Merchant, says Pyle played an instrumental role in the development of Soka and Calypso in the country. Merchant describes Pyle as the guiding wisdom to many young musicians during the over two decades of service to culture and the arts and says he is irreplaceable. Well, they're finishing fast and furious in the 2021 Talisker Whiskey Atlantic Challenge. The Antigua Naval Dockyard is the finish line for the 3,000 mile row across the Atlantic Ocean. Chief Executive Officer and Race Director of Karsten Olsen provides the update. I think I arrived this morning at 11 o'clock, around 11 o'clock, and then uh, one more tonight, and then during the night we have a few more. And then, I mean, the next 10 days will be uh, manic with a lot of arrivals. Well, although there is, no there is no competing Antigua team this year, a member of last year's team is offering support to Atlantic campaigns. I know a lot of people saw the other day that uh, Travis West, West, he arrived on one of our safety yards. So, you know, he has not only rowed across the Atlantic, he's also sailed across the Atlantic. Management of COVID-19 has been an area of focus for race organizers, and Olsen has been pleased with this aspect of it is that when we're down like a mirror it's quite easy for us to control the whole thing in terms of you know in regards to the pandemic uh, so everyone was safe and sound we sent them off and because they they don't arrive here all at the same time it's also manageable here uh, we obviously have a very very close uh, cooperation with the national park and the authority in general here in Antigua so uh, so far it's good it was a solemn morning for family and friends of Nelta Talamak as they paid their final respects. The 25-year-old became the country's 14th homicide victim for 2021, following the discovery of her body in the area of the Burma Dump on the 5th of December. Though her life was cut short, Nelta left a long-lasting impact to those around her. Family and friends remember her for her warm smile and loving personality. She was also a car enthusiast and had been a member of both Honda Headache 268 and Dadley Aces. Those in attendance at the funeral paid tribute today by wearing purple, which was her favorite color. All right, we to we tell, tell you that we're going to come back to this story uh, as well about the international he health experts talking about the possibility of an annual booster shot for COVID-19. We saw reactions today from members of the public on the comments from those experts on the possibility of a COVID-19 booster shot annually. Now, here is what some told our Terry Andrew in St. John's. If we have to take it, um, you know, providing that it all goes well, I mean, we should just take it. I mean. I, I love doing it because it's helping not only myself, but the whole nation of Antigua, Barbuda, and the Caribbean and the world over. I do not think it's going to matter because it's going to mutate again. No matter what you do, it, it's going to be mutations of this thing. I think we're going to be dealing with it forever. Taking a booster, you know, every year depends on how the mutation is, you know, how severe they are. Like we see the, the, the Omicron now, it's uh, more transmissible but it is less effective. So, but then if we start to, if we still continue to have these mutation all the time, yes, it is necessary. Right, I have to ask you again, or, or you just tell me? Tell me, tell me what you just told me just now. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, with the booster system, they have to educate us on this one, if they want us to take this, because it's not a thing that we are custom of, and it's not everybody immune system that is the same. People have different symptoms when they take the stuff. Okay, so taking it yearly, you don't think that's start again. Start again and tell me why you don't wanna why you don't think I'm not able to take it yearly.
right, uh, there you go. Sampling there of the responses. Uh, Terry Andrew engaged with members of the public in St. John's on the issue. As we said, international health experts have indicated uh, there is a possibility of an annual COVID-19 booster, Sean. The members of the public responding. Again, as we told you earlier as well, the, Inter the World Health Organization, uh, the Director General, Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, saying the world is likely to see several more variants before the end of the COVID-19 pandemic, even as Omicron continues to spread around the world. Here's another developing story that we're tracking. The, uh, the adaptation fund McKinnon's watershed drainage project has gained momentum. Three culverts were completed and opened over the weekend. Culverts three, four, and 13 were opened over the weekend. Department of Environment Project Technical Officer Adrian Grenway explains what remains to be done at culverts three and four. Remaining to be done here are the, the rails that should be placed on either side of the, the culverts as well as um, some removing of material still left in the waterway and placing of some boulders to help with er erosion before and after the culverts. He thanks the residents for their patience during the time of the closure. The completion of culverts three and four also now opens up Gem Lane and Penny Lane, improving the road network inside and the access to Lower Gamble. So look there at uh, some of the work which has been done. The infrastructural work in that area will, of course, keep across this one. Sherilyn Beezer will have a full report coming up at 10 o'clock. Do join us then. When we come back from this break, we'll turn our attention to news overseas. One of those stories that we're tracking closely, we'll get an update from Barbados, which is on the eve of general elections, a snap election. We'll tell you, uh, we'll actually go across to Bridgetown, Barbados to get a live update as electors prepare to go to the poll with an injunction and the decision on an injunction hanging like a Damocles sword over the process tomorrow. We'll cross live there. International news. We will tell you why China is urging people to wear masks and gloves when opening mail, especially from abroad. Those stories coming up for us on the ABS Evening News on air and online. Do stay with us, please.